Praise the Lord and good morning, good morning, good morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. I am rejoicing and I am already glad in it. Many of you are already tagging. Many of you have already shared this on your page. Many of you are already inviting people. I am so excited about the word of the Lord on this morning. I am excited about what he is going to speak to us. Listen, I feel his presence. Oh my God. I feel his presence so heavily right now. I am, listen, what God is speaking to me in my spirit, I'm trying to hold it. I'm trying to hold it. Y'all, I'm trying to hold it. But but listen, listen, I'm just going to give you a, a word of encouragement right now. I'm going to give you a word of encouragement right now. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold. I'm going to say it one more time. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. 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 Listen, we are on day 18. Yes. Day 18 of our prayer call. Listen, we're on day 18 of our prayer call. But if you're really fasting with me, listen, if you're really fasting with me, who God, I'm, I'm trying y'all because I feel like I'm about to just lose it right now. If you're really fasting with me, listen, we're on day 21. Oh God, we're on day 21. I'm going to say it again. We're on day 21 of the fast. Okay. We're on day 18 of the prayer call and the prophetic prayer time. I am on day three of my absolute fast. So meaning I have not eaten, eaten anything this week. So what you see now is all him. Okay. What you see now is all him. God told me to tell you, you got to understand what's going to happen Friday night. You have to understand what's going to happen Friday night. He says, all of y'all that keep saying, oh, Jesus, help me. Where you at, God? Where you at, God? I believe you, God. I'm fasting, God. I'm sowing, God. I'm trusting you, God. Where you at? He told me to tell you, I'm coming. Who? He said, I'm coming. Watch this. I'm coming to get you out. I'm coming to rescue you. I'm coming to set you free. I'm coming to heal. I'm coming to deliver. I'm coming to save. I'm coming to get you out. No matter what you've been in, I'm coming. Okay. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just feel him this morning. I just feel, last night, listen, I don't even know what, oh God. Mm, mm. I don't even know when I actually fell asleep. I know that by seven, I'm in my bed, but I can't, I can't, I can't recall when I fell asleep, but I've been in such a deep sleep. Watch this. I mean, a deep, like I've been sleeping this, these three days of this fast, I have literally been sleeping like somebody gave me anesthesia. I'm not even, it's not even that I'm dreaming more, more of the stuff that I share with y'all. God reveal it to me when I'm woke. Most of the things that I'm sharing with you that God showed me, God showed me, God said, God said, I'm woke when I see this because I have open eye visions. Watch this. So when I was asleep, I could feel the wind and I kept waking up thinking, is the air on? Because in my house, I have a dual, what they call a dual, um, I have a dual AC and heating system, which means my downstairs is controlled by one thermostat and upstairs is controlled by another one. So I can, I, I can, I normally have, because I don't like to be cold, I don't run my air in the summer downstairs. I let them run it upstairs and then the coolness will come down. But my vents are not on. Did you hear me say I felt the wind? Oh God, did you hear me say I felt the wind? I felt the wind of God. Oh God, I, fe I felt the wind. Listen, 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 Tamika, over there in YouTube. God bless y'all because some people are fasting from Facebook, so they they smart. They know I'm on YouTube, so they go over on YouTube. So if you hear me saying good morning in YouTube, it's people watching over there. So watch this. I felt the wind of God. Da -da -da okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I promise y'all I'm gonna get to the word this morning. But can I just flow in the prophetic for a minute? Can I just encourage you for a minute? I felt the wind of God and God began to show me. He says on Friday night, he said, my wind going to sweep. Listen, my wind going to sweep through. He says, he said, you got to tell them that they have to raise their expectation. He said, they have to understand that I'm shitting. He said, they have to understand that the enemy is doing exactly what he need to do. Okay. 
let, let me just scoot back because I'm about to knock this whole laptop over. The enemy is doing exactly what he need to do. The enemy is doing exactly what, I, what I'm allowing him to do. The enemy is doing exactly what he need to do. Because understand this, I will use any and everything that I have to, to get my glory out. He said, in order for them to be a miracle, there must be a crisis. Oh God, he began to tell me, he says, daughter, he says, daughter, he said, I know you, you, you're, you're concerned about the phone call you got. I know you're concerned about what's been spoken. I know you're concerned about what doctor said. He said, but I need you to remember who I am. Listen, he said, I need you to remember that you, he said, I told you on day one that my glory will be revealed. He said, I told you on day one that I will perform miracles on August the 11th. He said, I told you. He said, so don't, he said, so listen, watch this. He said, in order for me to perform a miracle, there must be a crisis. Okay. Okay. So I, I was like, okay, okay, God, I got you. I got you. So he told me, he said, so in order for me to perform a miracle, there must be a crisis. He said, the people that are coming are in crisis situation. He said, the people that are coming are in 911 situation. He said, but I'm coming to get them out. He said, I'm coming to set them free. I'm coming to heal. I'm coming to deliver. He said, I'm going to I'm going to show up as whoever they need me to be. He says, understand this, daughter. Listen, he says, in order, and I keep saying this because some of us, you can't tap out because of the crisis, because you're praying for a miracle. He said, he says, a miracle only happens when everything in the natural has been exhausted. They tried everything. They done everything. You take it every pill. He said, and it's not fixed. He said, so you need a miracle. He said, when you need a miracle, that means you need me to step in. Oh, God. Nine, one, one. Oh, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. Nine, one, one. He says, I am coming to do what I do. I am coming in the fullness, listen, of my power. I am coming to set free. I am coming to throw my weight around. He says, when my glory hits, it feels like a weight. Watch this. He began to tell me, he says, daughter, he said, they have to raise their expectation. He said they have to raise their expectation. He says, don't you understand why? Mm. Oh, God. He says, don't you understand that I allow Satan to do what he going to do? I allow him to think he winning. He says, the thing about it is, he said, I allow him to do that because I need my glory to be revealed. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. He says, I need my glory to be revealed in these end times. He says, and these people, okay, I'm trying y'all. He says, these people that's coming will become my glory carriers. He said, they will be the ones that my glory reside in. He said, every time they look on you, they're going to see my glory. Every time they look on you, they're going to see a miracle. Can you be my glory carrier? Because if you look at the world right now, if you look at the world like right now, people don't believe God. People don't, it's a whole lot of people that do not believe, do not believe that God can. And I begin to cry out to God yesterday because you have to understand I am fasting for, for, for the service on Friday. I'm not fasting because Dr. Three need this and Dr. Three, need, it ain't even about me. It's about, and I said, God, I just need people to see you as who you are. Mm, watch this. I need people to see you, God. I want people to see you as who you are. I want people to see, God, that you are king of kings, that you are Lord of lords, that you cannot, that you cannot fail, that you are not like man. You can't lie. I need people to see that because I don't want them to lose heart. Listen, I don't want to get them to get weary in their well doing. I said, God, if you could just show us your glory. Hmm. I said, God, if you could just show I said, God, I'm not talking about, watch this. I said, I'm not talking about what we experienced in the past. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm. I said, I'm putting a mandate on you. Oh, God. I said, I'm putting a mandate on heaven. I'm pulling on a prophetic from heaven. I'm pulling on an apostolic anointing from heaven. I need you to be that God. I need you to show up, God, as the God, as the breaker. I need the breaker's anointing to hit the building. And I begin to pray and I begin to pray and I begin to talk to God like that. I said, because God, I want people to see you. I want people to know who you are. I said, God, I know. I've seen you do miracles. I've seen you do stuff. I said, but God, I want everybody to see this. 
I said, I want everybody to understand why I'm like I am about you. I want everybody to understand where this fire that's burning in me that I can't get rid of, that won't go. I, I need them to understand that. I need them to understand who you are. In the fullness, listen to this, in the fullness of your power, in the fullness of your glory, I need people to see God. Not only see, but I need them to feel you. And then God began to tell me, he says, daughter, he said, I can and I am. Okay. He said, I can and I am. By that time, I was out. I literally went out like I was slain in the spirits when he said, I can and I am. I can and I am. Listen, so I need you to understand. Listen, who God, mm, what you going through, what you in right now. He said, Friday night, I'm coming to get you out. He says, Friday night, watch this. I'm coming to penetrate. Uh-oh. Mm, God. Oh, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. He says, I'm coming to penetrate. Many of you know me. Many of you have talked to me. You've communed with me. He said, but have I entered into you? Okay. He says, watch this, watch this, because whenever God give me something in the spiritual, I, ha I have to relate it to the natural so you can get what I'm saying. Watch this. He says, I'm coming back. He says, I am. He says, you are my bride. I'm coming back for my bride, which is the church, not a building, which is the church, not a denomination. I'm coming back for my bride without who is without spot or wrinkle. Watch this. In order for there to be a marriage. Watch this. In the Old Testament, you were not married unless you consummated the marriage. OK, I'm going to say that again. In the Old Testament, New Testament, you were not considered married unless you consummated the marriage, meaning there was an entering into and you became one. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So what is he saying? I am coming back for my church that is without spot or wrinkle. They are my bride. We are. It is a marriage thing. He says, well, I compare it to marriage. That's why I said, husbands love your wife as Christ loved the church. He laid down his life for the church. He says, so in order for us to be in this marriage, in order for you to say that you truly know me, I must enter in. I must consummate the marriage. Friday night. He says, many of you have experienced me, but you have not experienced the consummation of me. You now you have not experienced. You have not experienced when we enter into when we become one. He said you now have not experienced. He said, but Friday night, mm, God, Friday night we shall become one. Oh God, listen. So many of you will be baptized again in the Holy Spirit. Mm. Many of you are going to receive the miracles, the signs, the wonders, because I'm going to tell you what, I give you a little glimpse of what God gave me in my prayer time. We were in service. Watch this. We were in service. And it was like somebody was, I could see like one of my mentees or, or somebody over to the side. And I was up front doing something with the people because I had the mic in my hand. And I happened to look and they were screaming, miracle number one, miracle number one. It was like they were counting them out. And then I kept going. I kept going. I was like, praise God. And I just kept going. And the people of God was going up. They were praising. They were worshiping. And then I heard miracle number two. And I was like, oh, God. And I just kept going and going. And because God said, listen, when I consummate it, oh, God, when I enter into, when we become one, it's no problem with you receiving the miracle. Okay. Are you ready to receive the miracle? He says, there is no problem with you receiving the miracle. He says, there is no problem, listen, for you going into your next level in him. God said, many of you will be elevated. Mm. Many of you will be elevated in your anointings, elevated in where you are going in God, elevated in your jobs. He said, a lot is going to happen Friday night, but you got to come ready. Watch this. He began to tell me, he says, daughter, listen, and I, I, I promise you, I think, I think I'm going to get to the word. He says, daughter, and I began to think of this song because me and my mom were talking about it the other day. Me and my mom was talking about this song the other day because I'm always saying, God, I love you. 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 And it's because many times I think about what he's done. And then many times I think about what he's going to do. And then other times I think about what he's about to do, I know not of, but because I'm his friend. Uh-oh, 
He called me friend because he loved me, because he died for me. Listen, I said, there is, is no telling where God is taking this thing. There is no, you got to understand, even with your life, all 35 of y'all this morning, there is no telling what God want to do with you. He said, can we consummate this thing? Can we take it a step deeper? Why do you think, did you always hear me talk about, and I begin to say, okay, God, so, so you want me to do an absolute fast? I've done two days before. He said, I need three. And I'm like, but he said, I need three. And then he said, then he told me yesterday, because I was like, okay, yeah, Wednesday, the last day, Thursday, I'm going to eat this, and I'm going to eat this, and I'm going to eat this. He said, no, you're not. He said, no, you're not. I said, okay. And so when I was walking, watch this, when I was walking, he began to tell me, he says, daughter, he said, don't you understand this? In order for you to go to war, you got to train first. He said, well, didn't your daughter go to training first? I said, oh, Jesus. He said, so you have to tell them what they going through is training ground for where I'm taking them. In order for you to be able to war effectively, you have to be trained. You're fasting training. You're going through training. He says, listen, he says, you got to train, oh God, for war. He said, when you have trained for something, watch this. When you have trained for something, you're ready when the war comes. You don't panic. You don't, you don't, you don't treat. Okay. He says, you don't treat me like a genie in a bottle when you have been training. Because when you're training, you are getting ready. You know a war is coming. So therefore, you're already talking to me. You're not talking to me right now because, oh, oh God, now I'm in trouble. God, I need you. He said, because why? He said, because if you're my friend, if we have a relationship, we talk often. Watch, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share these. And y'all know this. That this is this is Baptist. Y'all know I was born and raised Baptist. I got Baptist roots. And we always sung these hymns. Watch this. What a friend we have in Jesus. Y'all, listen, and I don't know why during this fast, all these old hymns are coming back. And now they mean something. You know how back in the day we were just singing stuff? Because we in church, Kiara, know we all grew up in the same Baptist church. Trina know, all them know. Listen, we, we were all in there singing these hymns together. We knew them by heart. We still know them. We, we just singing them. We, we ain't thinking about what it mean. But watch this. But if you knew my grandmother, Mother Broom at Second Calvary, oh, she would clear out a whole row. Like, you think I got fire. My grandmother would clear out a whole row like it was nothing. I would literally be saying, listen, I would literally be saying I was little. Grandma, are you going to shout today? Are you going to shout today? Because I, I don't... I don't, I don't, I don't like when you be doing that. Like, I don't like, cause as a kid, it would kind of scare me. Like what's wrong with her? But I got used to it. And now I understand it. Now I understand when my grandmother would be in the kitchen cooking and a praise would erupt. And we'll be like, what, what, what happened? And she would just get to going in the kitchen. Like it was nothing. It, I mean, one thing about both my grandmothers, they would tell me, you take Jesus everywhere you go. You don't hold back. Watch this. So, so this, this here right here. And I was singing it yesterday and I said, let me pull them lyrics to make sure I'm singing this right because I know to me it's personal. So I was trying to make sure that, that I am not Sheila Tower, don't do that. I was trying to make sure that, that, I, that I had the lyrics right. Watch this. It says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Listen, what a privilege. Oh, okay. Mm, watch this. What a privilege it is to carry everything, everything. Oh, God. Everything to God in prayer. In prayer I means I'm communing with him. What a friend. What a friend I have in Jesus. All my sins and griefs to bear. I can give him all my sins. He going to forgive me. I can give him all my grief. He going to help me. I can give him everything. It says because I take everything to him in prayer. And they say that's a privilege. Whoop. Do you? I need you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I need y'all to understand. We have a privilege that people, I have a mentee in Pakistan. Do you know that they have to almost go in hiding to have a service? But we can pray wherever we are. We, we can lift up our hands. We can go to church. We can do, it's a privilege. Listen, it says, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Watch this. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Hmm, God. Oh, what peace we up, Trina, Trina, you know, listen. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because, okay, y'all, I about jumped up. I'm going I'm, to I'm slow it down. I'm going to slow it down. My mom on here, I know she's going to text me in a minute and say, please, watch this. Okay. okay I'm going to slow it down. 
Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry oh God, everything to God in prayer. I'm going to say it again. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. What does that mean? We don't even receive his peace. Mm, God, we don't even receive the peace that he wants to give us. <sighs> okay. We don't even receive the peace that he wants to give us. We carry around needless pain. He said, you ain't got to be going through that pain. You ain't even got to be dealing with that. It says, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Prayer is your vehicle. Listen, prayer is what gets you out. Listen, before I ever became the preacher, before I ever became the prophetess, I was the intercessor. Okay. I was the intercessor. I love prayer time. I still love prayer time. I would, I would tell my girls at any given moment, we can be doing something as a family. I need to go talk to God. Not begging him. I need to talk to him. Why? Because he's my friend. I hadn't talked to him. Listen, if, if, you, if me and you are best friends, you're going to at least talk to me once a week. At least once a day. Listen, if we best friends, we're not letting no time go by and we not talk. Listen, I, I have a mentee right now and I'm to these three days to tore her and me up because I can't talk to her. We can't talk. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I need to share this with her. Oh, but and, and God began to me say, that's what our relationship should be like. Listen, he says, he says, because he says, because if you're bringing everything to me in prayer, you're going to be OK because, you know, I'm your friend and you know, I got you. But if you're waiting, listen, till you get in a 911 situation, then you're wondering, I wonder, is he going to get me out? I wonder, is I wonder, do he hear me? But if I've been talking to you all the time, uh oh, who is this for? If I've been talking to him all the time, he know me. I know him. We have consummated this thing. He has entered into in here. He has entered into me. We have relationship. So when I go to him, he said, oh, that's my girl. What you, what's up? What's going on? What you need? It ain't like, well, who are you? I ain't heard from you since uh, five months ago. Watch this. And because he, he keeps saying, I am not the genie in the bottle. Listen, I am not. I'm going to say it again. Your genie in a bottle. That you just rub it whenever you need me. And I'm supposed to come in like Superman and save the day. He said, no, 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 no. Don't treat me like that. Watch this. It's, he says, it says, have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord. and Y'all, listen. Can I say that one, one more time? Watch this, watch this, Roz. Watch this, watch this. Have we trials and temptations? Are you going through? Or is Satan tempting you? Because remember, God don't tempt. He, he tests. <laughs> Say it again. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? Who God. Is there trouble? 911. Is there trouble anywhere? He, it says, we should never be discouraged. <laughs> oh, God. We should never be discouraged. Watch this. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, God. Oh, God. Drop that in the chat. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Not your friends. Not, not my, my prayer partner. He says, you run to your prayer partner before you even come to me. Mm. When that 911 situation hit, what did you do? Mm. What was your default? Y'all know I love that. What was your default setting? What was the first thing you did when that 911 situation hit? Did you take it to the Lord in prayer? Watch this. It says, can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Who oh God? He says, I know your, he said, I know your weaknesses. Mm. I, I, I know what you're going through. I know what you're going to face. I know what you've been in. He said, but I need y'all to bring it to me. He says, it, it's okay. He says, it's okay to tell Dr. Three secondhand because y'all know she my girl. He said, that's fine. He said, but I, first, have you, I, I give it to you like this. You got a best friend. Watch this. I have Jackie. I have, I have a best friend. As soon as something hit, I don't call my best friend. I'm like going through. I don't even tell my best friend. I just post it on Facebook. What is your best friend going to say? Why you ain't tell me? Mm. 
I thought I was your friend. So what do you think God is saying? Who can I be your first point of contact? Oh God, help me, Holy Ghost. Can I be your first point of contact? It's okay to call Dr. Three. She don't mind standing in the gap. But what about me? Because Dr. Three is, is not going to be the one to heal you if she lay hands and you get healed. It's because of me working through her. Oh God, I love you this morning. What a friend. What a friend. Oh God. Oh God. What a friend we have in Jesus. In fact, I think I'm going to skip what I had for the day and go to something else. Let me see. Whew. When you, when you, oh God, when you experience, whew, God, I love you. I love you. Oh God. Oh God, I love you. I love you. I love you. He said, I want to be your friend. He said, I want to be your friend. He said, I want to call you friend. Watch this. When my grandson was here, it was so cute because me and him got this bond that I just can't even, even explain. My granddaughter be looking like, oh, y'all extra. Like she, Safi is like, do y'all. I mean, y'all just do the most. Whenever he get up, he said, my mean me and Brittany have to bring him to me. When I hear him coming, I say, best friend. And he just. It's like he just run and he's so excited. I said, come here, best friend. And he love, he love when I say that. And God began to show me. He says, that's what I want to be to you. He says, that's how I feel when, when I'm your best friend. He said, it makes me happy. Oh, God. He said, it makes me smile. He said, it causes me to sing. Oh, God. He says, it causes me to sing over you. Who oh God, who is that for? That's in Ecclesiastes. Go look it up later. He said, it causes me to sing over you. What am I singing over you? He said, I'm singing my blessings. I'm singing my promises. I'm singing my favor. He said, when I'm your best friend, I sing over you. Mm, God, mm, God, help me, help me, help me, help me. Watch this. It says, when we encounter the glory, it affects our relationships with everybody, not just him. It affects, watch this, my relationship with everybody it affects i'm gonna say it again it affects my relationship with everybody watch this i was sitting there going through something for a service on friday night and god you know, i was like work like seriously like working like working working and in the middle of that god interrupted he says there are going to be people that they have lied on you talked about you like, like he says they have talked about you not in a good way he said i still need you to pray who oh god he said i still need you to lay hands he said, in fact, what I'm doing, he said, the point of the fast, watch this. He said, the point of the fast, the three days, I got to get you ready. He said, because I can't have any of your flesh looking at folks sideways. Ah, oh, God, watch it. He said, I can't have you looking at folk sideways. Hmm. He said, I know you heard the conversation. He said, I let you hear them. He says, but I want them to see that I'm using you. Who is this for? He says, I want them to see the God in you. The God that loves, the God that looks past, the God that forgives. He's able to see that. He said, everything I'm doing in you is going to show you how to treat people. It's going to show you what y'all don't understand. He says, when my glory enter in, when we have become intimate, when you have fast and you have pray, He said, you can't treat people any kind of way, regardless of what they say about you. It is something when you know they don't like you. It ain't a, I think they don't. I can't tell if they do. I, I don't know. No, you know for a fact. They don't like you. Mm. You know for a fact when you walk in the room, they walk out. You know for a fact that when you walk in, they wonder why is she even here? Why are they here? Why are they here? You know for a fact they don't like you. He says, love the hell out of them. Uh-oh. 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 He says, love the hell out of them. What does that mean? Everything in them that's not like me. He says, love the hell out of them. Mm. Watch this. Watch this. He says, because by loving kindness have I drawn thee. He says, one thing they can't deny is that, is that my hand is on you. He said, one thing they can't deny is that I'm in you because they don't even understand. Oh God, watch. Because they don't even understand how you still treating them nice. <clears throat> they don't understand why you haven't retaliated yet. They don't understand, well, why she ain't even saying it. She ain't even responding. And watch this. And some of them trying to get a response out of you and they won't. On Facebook, oh, they trying to get you to respond. They, they making sure you see it. They praying to God you see it. They want to get a response. Don't respond. Mm, 
don't respond. Watch this. It says, it says, one of the most important effects of seeing the glory of God, watch this, is a change in our relationships with other people. Hmm. Because God is my friend, watch this, because God is my friend, because I commune with him, because I sit in his presence, because his glory reside in me. That means I have some of his characteristics. Mm, watch this. Judas. OK, Judas. Listen, my team, Judas. Here we go. Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss. Oh, God, have mercy. Ah, oh, God, Judas. I'm going to say it again betrayed Jesus with a kiss. What are you saying? Judas was on the team. Who, what, did, what did Jesus tell him? Go on and do what you need to do. That means Jesus already knew what Judas was going to do. What is God saying this morning? You already know that they're talking about you. Let them talk. Let them go on and do what they're going to do. We know the outcome of Judas, right? Uh-oh. So because my team, because there, there may be, there, there, well, let, let me just not even go there. You will be betrayed by a Judas, somebody you kept close, somebody you held close to you, that you, you, you see what they're doing. Everybody telling you what they're doing. Everybody showing you what they're doing. Then you were betrayed with a kiss. I keep telling y'all, everybody that sit right there with you when you going through, everybody that sit right there when you planning, ain't always for you, but they necessary. Oh God, y'all don't like that part. They necessary. You were the best thing. You are the best thing. Listen, listen. Why you in their presence, baby? You the best thing since sliced bread. Why you? Why you talking to them, feeding them, sowing into them? You the best thing since sliced bread. But baby, they are a Judas. But they necessary. Watch this. Oh God, I love you. I love you. God said, if there had never been a Judas, watch this. Jesus, listen, if there had never been a Judas, Jesus would never been arrested, which means Jesus would never been persecuted, which means Jesus, Jesus would have never went to the cross. Judas was necessary. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Listen, Jude, that stuff just like my grandma. Listen, Judas was necessary. He was all part of the plan. That's why I keep telling y'all what you going through is all a part of the plan. Mm, God, watch. Let, let, let me stay. Let me stay right here. So our relationships, when the glory of God is resting in you, it will affect your relationship with other people. Watch this. One of the most important effects of seeing the glory of God is a change in how you interact and in how you deal with other people. Watch this. Once we receive this revelation of God's glory, we cannot continue in our own ways of treating people. We must change. When I receive, when I embrace, when I take on, when I accept that the glory of God reside in me, I can't treat you nasty, even though I know what you said. Ah, oh God, even though, even though I have, I have done all this for you, been there for you. My question to you is, what hard did you do it for them in? Because if you did it because God told you, then you ain't gonna feel no type of way because they acting crazy. You're like, oh, that's between them and God. That's between them and God. Because I had to learn this. Because y'all know I told y'all I was one of the people that I, I would fight you because I knew, number one, I'm a win. And if you get an upper hand, I got three brothers that's going to jump in. God forbid my mama find out. So watch this. I was one of them people that was I would fight when I was younger. I was mean when I was younger. Watch this. And but when the glory stepped in for real, I couldn't continue like that. I couldn't keep being mean and looking at folk and cutting folk off. And I don't want to deal with you. And I, would, I, I, ain't, I ain't got nothing to say to you. And you bet not call me for prayer. Didn't I just have a service Friday night? God had to deal with me. Watch this. Because the glory stepped in, everything in me had to change. Watch this. Ephesians 4.31, Paul warns. Paul, war Paul will warn us. Watch this. Ephesians 4.31 through 32. Watch this. If the Lord has shown you how tender, kind, and loving he is toward you, then you better show the same character of God to others. Watch this. Let all bitterness, oh God, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away. Quit talking about them. Quit gossiping about them. Because I can guarantee you, oh, somebody going to come and tell you what they said. Every time. Every time. What is that to get a response out of you? The Bible says, 
but put away from you all that anger, wrath, clamor, evil speaking. Watch this. And be kind to one another. Watch this. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Watch this. Forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake have forgiven you. What, what does the Bible say? Forgive and you shall be forgiven? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Mm -mm, baby, I'm going to take it to my grave. I'm going to take it to my grave. And watch this. For me to forgive you don't mean I got to invite you back to my house. Oh, no. To forgive you don't mean I got to have a relationship, a relationship with you anymore. To forgive you mean I have simply forgiven you for what you did, what you said to me. But baby, you can't ever come back to Mount Holly. Unless God say so, not at my house. You would never sit up under my your feet under my table unless God give me a prophetic dream revelation and the angels got to fall down. Watch this. So you got to understand when the glory of God, watch this, Sheila, when the glory of God enter into you, you got to understand that that means I'm going to treat people, I'm going to treat them different. People always ask me, how in the world do you and your ex-husband talk like that? Baby, I had to forgive. I had to forgive so I can live. I don't know who that's for. I had to forgive so I can live. I had to forgive so I can live. I had to forgive so I can be forgiven. I had to forgive. Well, why, should, why are you talking about forgiveness, Dr. Three? Because if you get in that prayer line Friday, you have unforgiveness in your heart. We're we wasting our time. Mm. We're wasting our time. Do you know unforgiveness will hinder your prayers? Mm. Watch this. When I forgive you, Watch this. When I forgive you for what you did to me, it is saying you no longer have power over me. Mm. To walk around angry takes a lot of work. To walk around mad takes a lot of work. Listen, forgive, Bev, forgive so you can live. Mm, God, forget, I don't care what they, I don't know, I don't even know why I'm going, if I'm in the vein, just say, Dr. Three, just stay there. Listen. Forgive so you can. I'm telling you, when I went through my separation and my divorce, oh, baby, it's some stuff I can't even repeat that was done. It's a hurt that I, I said, you know what? I wouldn't wish this on nobody. Listen, I said, I wouldn't wish this on nobody. I went from God killing. God, I want you to, I, I want you to get it back. God, I want you to do this. And God began to say, so you praying witchcraft prayers now? This is what we're doing? Uh oh, oh yeah, we do that. We do that. We we, we pray them prayers. We pray. Be honest. You you don't pray them. I don't pray them. Listen, it's well because we'll pray prayers. I just want them to go through. I just want them to hurt like I hurt. I want them to feel this kind of pain. I want them to suffer. I want them to suffer. Then we go to okay, God would well then just don't kill them. That means you're getting a little bit delivered. Don't kill them. Just make them see that what they did. God, just make them see. And God begin to say, um, daughter, witchcraft prayers. You're praying witchcraft prayers. I told you, watch this. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine. If you're going to get the victory and I'm going to get the glory, that means vengeance is mine. He said, you got to forgive. I need y'all to deal with this for Friday. Deal with it for Friday. Watch this. You got to forgive so you can live. God already told us what he going to do on Friday night. Miracle signs and wonder. We're going to count out the miracles Friday. So don't be sitting in your seat and got a miracle and just sit there like, I want to do she know. Baby, you better get up and holler and say, I got a mirror. I need to know. God, the people of God need to know. Watch this. So, okay, let, let, let me get back to this because I was doing real good. God is telling, listen, God is telling us through Paul, watch this. You have seen my glory and you know my nature and character that I am gracious. He said, when you see my glory, this is what you experience. Watch this. I am gracious. I am merciful. I am long suffering and I'm ready to forgive. Now I want you to express that same thing to other people. Mm -mm. Watch this. Lord, your glory. I want to experience your glory. Your glory reside in me. He said, how are you treating people? He said, because if we have a relationship, that means you have some of my characteristics. That means you act like me. So how are you treating them people that lied on you? How are you treating them people that talked about you? How are you treating them people that you know they had something? You know they had an event and they ain't invite you. They invited everybody else, but they ain't invite you. But they the same people you poured into. He said, how you treating them now? Watch this. He says, he says, because you have experienced my glory, you have seen my glory, you have felt my glory. He says, and you know my nature 
and you know my character because all of that, everything, everything that I embody, who I am, my character is all that shows up when my glory is, is revealed to you. Watch this. It says that glory shows you that I'm gracious, I'm merciful, and I'm long-suffering, and I'm ready to forgive. He says, because remember, when you experience my glory, it makes you confess who you are. What do I do? I forgive you. He says, so you, you have experienced my forgiveness, so I need you to extend that same thing. I need you to extend forgiveness. I need you to extend grace. I need you to be merciful, and I need you to be long-suffering. Uh-oh. We don't want long-suffering. Suffer long. <laughs> Go through. Be there for somebody that's weaker than you. I don't care if it take them 30 years to get right. Be there. Still praying them through. Still encouraging them. So he said, I have been long suffering with you. He says, how long did it take you to get to the point you are now? Mm, God, he said, that's what I need from you. Watch this. Even though Moses had this revelation of God's glory at one point, he misrepresented it to the people. Watch this. He grew impatient with Israel over their disobedience. Watch this. And this is what caused Moses not to go into the promised land. Everything I just said, Moses, Moses experienced that. Everything that I just said, Moses walked it out. But watch this. He made one mistake. God said, okay, Moses, people have seen that you've been with me. People see your glory on my, they, they see my glory on your life. People see the miracles that I'm performing through you. He said, but now he says, I want them to see the power in you, Moses. Watch this. L listen to this carefully. He says, now I, he said, Moses, I want them to see the power in you. You, Moses, the man. Watch this. He says, Moses, I want you to strike the rock. Watch this. I want you to strike the rock. And when you strike the rock, Water going to come out. Watch this. No, not a strike. I'm sorry. He, he said, I want you to speak to the rock. And when you speak to the rock, water going to come out. Moses didn't do that. Moses got mad and hit the rock. When God give you instructions, I got to get off here. When God give you instructions, listen, do exactly what he said. Don't waver. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. It can cost you. We want these signs, miracles, wonders. We already know it goes back. Sabria, listen, it goes back to obedience. Did I do everything by the letter exactly like God told me? Watch this. I'm, I'm giving you this. Then I'm going to pray and we're going to get off here. Watch this. <clears throat> I remember when I started worshiping warfare in 20, 2014, I started worshiping warfare. Watch this. God gave me strategic instructions do you know everybody that thought they were helping me were giving me listen to this listen to this leaders prophets pastors watch this everybody that was giving me advice was contrary to what god told me oh but their ideas were great oh they ideas make it made it seem like oh this is about to take it to the next level i even had listen god told me he says this is where i want you to have it this is who I need to be participating in it. He says, watch this. And I need you to take your money and pay for it. I don't need you to ask nobody to sow. He said, I don't need you to ask nobody to, to give you money for this to happen. He says, this is what I need to happen through you, Elizabeth. He says, so what I need you to do is do it. Exact. And he told me, he said, write it all down. He said, I want you to do it by the letter. I went to my pastor. Because that was in my assignment. That, that was part of what God told me. Go to the pastor, talk to him first, get his approval, get his blessing over it, and then you're going to go from there. Watch this. So I did that. But when I went to my pastor, well, you don't have to have it in that area. You can have it in there in the big sanctuary with all the chairs and all this. And you can use the sanctuary. And you got the pulpit. And you got this. And then God, I said, really? And he was like, yeah. And I kind of got excited. Then God was like, um, ma'am, ma'am, what did I tell you? And I said, oh, well, thank you, Dr. Stevens, but I want, I really want to just have it in the gym. Y'all watch this. I said, I really just want to have it in the gym. He was like, Sister Three, you sure? Because you can use the sanctuary. I mean, you got all the chairs set up. You got the sound. Everything is there. You got, you got the stage. You got the cross right there. And God said, and I said, listen, that I don't want a church atmosphere. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He said, I don't want a church atmosphere. He said, I don't even want the people dressing up. He says, I said, I want it to be a safe place for everybody. 
He said, some people have so much church hurt. The minute you say it's going to be at the church, they ain't coming. He says, with this, what I'm doing, there will be no excuses. Oh, God, I love you. He says, follow my plan. Exactly. I said, God, I hear you. I hear you. Then he said, and I need you to pay for it out of your pocket. Don't even take money from your husband. Uh oh. He said, because I gave the assignment to you. Oh, God, I love you. He said, I gave the assignment to you. He says, I don't need nobody else's money involved. I need yours. What was he saying? I need your yes totally. I need your yes totally. Who is this for? I need your yes totally. Don't go off the plan. I don't know who this is for. Don't go off the plan. Don't go, drop, Bev, you in the vein. Drop that in the chat. Follow the plan. Follow the plan the way he gave it to you because people are going to come. They're going to give you some ideas. It's going to sound great. It's going to sound wonderful. It's going to sound magnificent. He said, that's not what I want. Mm, God, he says, follow the plan. Listen, let us pray because I'm, I'm over my time. Listen, listen, let us pray. Father God, we thank you, great and mighty God. We thank you this morning for all that you are doing. We thank you for what you are saying. We thank you, oh God, for preparing us for the glory. We thank you, oh God, for looking at us and thinking enough of us to be partakers of your glory. We thank you, oh God, right now for revealing to us who we need to forgive, who we need to forgive so we can live, who we need to forgive so we can move on, who we need to forgive so we can leave the past in the past at, oh God forgive so you can leave the past in the past at last I want to leave the past in the past at last God said this morning you need to forgive so you can live you need to forgive so you can live you need to forgive so you can heal you need to forgive so I can take you to the next level yes they hurt you yes they lied on you yes they talked about you yes they still owe your money he said but I need you to get past that he said, I need you to get past that. He said, I need you to get past that so you can move forth in what I have you. He said, I'm going to elevate you. I am elevating you now. Oh, God. I am elevating you now. I am elevating you now. I'm dealing with it now. Oh, God. He says, I'm dealing with it now so I can elevate you into your next dimension in me. Oh. He says, these dimensions that I have for you, he said, there you will rule, there you will reign. He said, I'm training you now to war. He said, well, I'm taking you. He said, you will war, war and war effectively. He said, this time you won't throw in the towel. This time you won't get weary. This time you won't faint. He said, but this time you coming ready. He says, I'm arming you now so you can war. He said, I'm arming you now. So you can step into the next. He said, you will be my glory carry. What does that mean? He said, because what I'm doing in you now, my glory going to be revealed. People going to look at you. They ain't going to like you, but they can't going to be able to deny that my glory rests there. He says, you're going to know that you are oh God. He says, you're going to know. Sure, no time is what? Oh God. Okay, y'all don't. No time is wasted in God. Who God? Listen, Cheryl, 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 that's my friend, that's my friend. Cheryl, listen, listen. He says, no time is wasted in me. I'm going to use everything. Oh, God. He says, I'm going to use everything. Uh, I know who you are. You got you got my God kids. I know who you are. You got the grandbabies. I know, I know, I remember you. No wall, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yep, you moved up to D.C. somewhere. Maryland, I don't know. But watch this. He said, no time was wasted. Oh, God, I love you this morning. He says, no time was wasted. He said, I'm a baby. He said, I'm going to use everything. Everything you went through, he said, I'm going to use it. He said, all the hurt, I'm going to use it. He said, in fact, I'm going to use it for you to go get my daughters out. There is ministry on your life. He said, I'm going to use everything. Ain't nothing wasted in God. Oh, God. What did God say in the beginning? There must be a Judas. Oh, God, I love you. He said, there must be a Jew. I need y'all to understand what you went through. The pain, the hurt, the sickness, all this stuff. He said, it was not for nothing. Mm, God. He says, it was not for nothing. He said, nothing is going to be. I'm going to use everything. Oh, God. He said, I'm going to use everything. He said, I'm going to get glory out of everything you went through. Even if it was your fault. Uh-oh. 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 Even if you caused it, I can still get glory. Oh, God, I love you this morning. He said, even though you caused it, because you were hard-headed, you heard me tell you, don't do it, red flag, and you did it anyway. He said, I'm still going to use it. He says, nothing is wasted. Mm. No time wasted. Mm. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Ah, 
my God. He said, no time is wasted. No time. Oh God, I love you. I love you. I love you. No time is wasted. Watch this, because I thought, because I was married for 22 years, knew him for 25, I thought when, when the marriage ended, I said, I have wasted 22 years of my life. God had rebuked me so bad. He said, you say what now? <laughs> I said, I wasted. And I was just crying, I wasted God. That was 22 years, I could have been doing something else. He says, no, 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 no. You were exactly, listen, where I needed you to be. He said, I needed you to go through everything you went through for the past 22 years so I can use it for my glory. Why do you think now you see this fire? Why do you think now you see God's girl? Why do you think now there's a worship and a warfare and there's a soul down and there's all these things? He said, because I used everything you went through to pull that out of you. He said, nothing was wasted. Who God? Nothing. I don't know who this is for this morning. Nothing you went through was wasted. He said, I'm going to use it all. I'm going to use it all. Remember, because we are what? His glory carriers. His glory carriers. His glory carriers. His glory carriers. Listen, listen, listen. Vanessa, um, Minister Gilchrist is going up the line. Vanessa, Vanessa, watch this. She lost her husband. Watch this. Married for years. I, I cannot, I, longer than I was ever married. So I cannot imagine the hurt that felt like. I can't imagine. Listen, the hurt that she probably still feels some days. But watch this. God said, but I'm going to use that. So what's she doing now? Preaching to the widows, writing books about the widows. And if you come to God's girl, you're going to hear her full testimony. But watch this. Because God said, I'm going to use everything, even the death. Woo. How he going to use that? He says, because you're going to grieve, but you're going to grieve right. And when you grieve right, he said, I can birth a ministry. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm going to get off here because y'all pulling and, and, and I can just sit here and do this all day because y'all know I ain't got nowhere to go. I can't even leave the house. Watch this. So listen. I need you to come ready Friday. I need you to bring the children. Watch. I, okay. Watch this. So y'all, if you saw my Facebook post, she'll say, God allowed me to post one thing and I had to log off. Um, I was able to, I posted that I found in my, listen, listen how strategic God was. I remember doing the prayer call. I said, I am going to anoint oil for the kids. Cause last year I did the huge bottles for all the adults. But I said, I got on the prayer call and the Holy Spirit was talking. And I'm thinking but when I speak through the Holy Ghost, I, it's like a part of me that'd be like, how are you going to do that? But anyway, I was on here and I said, I said, I am going to consecrate oil for um, the children that are going to attend the service. And I gave instructions because I want them to anoint themselves. I want them. I want them. Listen, I want the kids to anoint themselves. Not you going to tell me that name. Of the, I need them to train them now. Train them now. Watch this. I was I had I was doing this with my grandson and he's two. I had the oil like this in the bottle and I said, put it on your finger. So I put it on his finger and I took his little finger and I did like that. And he said, okay. So we were practicing. I was training him at two. Watch this. So, so, so watch this. So God began to say, I want you to anoint, I want you to anoint the oil for the kids and give it to them. And they're going to anoint themselves every morning before they go out the, before they go out the door to go to school because of what is coming through the school system. Watch this. And so God began to tell me, and as I was saying it, I'm like, where you going to get the bottles from? Because I'm not like some preachers. I'm just going to tell you, I don't buy oil that's already done. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, 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 not me. Whenever you see me say I'm consecrating the oil, I am literally, if you come to my house when I'm consecrating oil, you will see the vials or the bottles or the vessels or whatever I'm going to pour me sitting there empty. I pray over the empty bottles first. Watch this. Then I go pray over the oil separate. Watch this. Then I take that oil that I prayed over and I pour it in each vessel. And as I'm pouring, I'm praying. As I pour, I'm praying. Now this take a while because guess how many, watch this. Because guess, I told you I'm not your regular prophet, preacher, pastor, whatever y'all want to call me. I'm just not regular. God just got me different. So, and I don't sell my oil. Okay. My oil is never for sale. You need to ask me. Freely I receive, freely I give. Now you can sow a seed, that's up to you. But I'm not going to say this, oh, you can get a bottle of oil for five dollars. No, 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 no. Watch this. So I'm thinking, I know I have the oil, but I don't have any vessels is what I'm thinking. So I go, I did my walk because after the prayer call, I have to walk to kind of bring myself, calm myself down. I have to walk. I Normally I walk between, I'm up to about five miles now. So I walk every morning after the prayer call. So I got back in the house and I went in the kitchen. I said, well, let me look. Tracy, don't, don't do that. 
my oil is not for sale. Watch this. Ooh, ooh, okay, Tracy, don't do that because I about went left all the way again. Your oil is not for sale. What are you saying? People be around you because of the oil that's on your life. It's not for sale. Okay. Okay. I don't know who that was for. People are around you because you're oily. Your oil ain't for sale. Guard your pearls. Don't cast your pearls before the swine. Guard your oil. Guard your oil. I don't know who this is for. Guard your oil. Your oil ain't for sale. You have people that will befriend you just because they going through. I've had it to happen. Just because they going through, they your, you, you their best, best friend. Then when they get what they want, they gone. My oil ain't for sale, baby. My oil ain't for sale. I don't know who that was for, but you need to understand some people around you because they know you can get a prayer through. Your oil not for sale. Okay, watch this. So I came in the house from my walk and I said, I don't know. I said, I guess I'm going to have to go on Amazon and um, Amazon Prime and order some bottles because I don't have a bottles. So I go down and in, in where I keep my oil. I pulled the big jug of oil out, set it on the counter, went and got my oil out the bathroom, set it on the counter. And then it was like the Lord said, look down there, look again. So I looked and I saw like what somebody had brought me jars. I think it was Isha had brought me some jars of oil or jars to put oil in. And I pulled that out. But under there, listen, y'all, under there was another box. And I'm thinking, what is this? Because I'm always ordering stuff for ministry and saying, well, I use it later. I don't know. But God told me to get it. Y'all, I opened up the box. It was a hundred. Now I said, I ain't have none. It was a hundred vows just sitting there. And I'm thinking, where in the world are these? Because I know I just used the oil for, for the shut-in we had. So I'm like, I just used all the vows at the shut-in that we had. So where did this, where did this come from? Y'all, miracles. There were a hundred vows just sitting there, still in the box, never even open. I said, you know what? I said, oh, you ain't playing. I said, you ain't playing. You ain't playing, God. This is why I say it's important that you get the kids there. Do not ask me for oil for kids that's not there. Mm. It's important when I lay hands on each one of them individually and then I send them to the side to get their oil. That's how we're going to do this. And I'm going to pray for the kids first. Watch this. I'm, I'm explaining this because I don't want you sitting there saying, well, I thought she was going to pray for us. We, I mean, we the adult. I'm going to get, I will get to you. But watch it. I'm telling you how, how strategic God is. This is how he told me. He says, daughter, he says, I want you to call all the kids up first. You're going to pray over all of them. Then you're going to pray a corporate prayer over all of them. He says, then you're going to anoint each kid. Watch this. And then send them to the right to get their bottle or then send them back to their seat. I said, okay. I said, well, why I'm doing the, why I'm doing the kids first? Shouldn't I just, he says, because watch this. Because if you do the adults first and they start falling out and screaming and demons getting expelled, he said the kids going to be too scared to come up there. Uh oh, strategic. He said it will make the kids too scared to come up there. So I don't, I don't need them coming to me in fear. Mm. He said, handle my babies first. Listen, handle the babies first. Listen, I'm I'm get off here. I'm, I'm, I promise y'all I'm going to get I'm, I'm getting off here. I will see you in the morning. Listen. For prayer, I love to say for sold out. I will see you in the morning at 6 a.m. for prayer. Listen, make sure that you're here in the morning. Make sure that you get the kids there Friday night. Make sure you invite everybody you know because his glory is going to hit that place like never before. I already know it. I feel it like never before. Listen, make sure you're there. Listen, if you want to get your seed in the ground this morning, the information is on the bottom of the screen. You're going to tag that glory carrier. Glory carrier glory carrier that's what you're gonna tag this that your seed this morning if this word is for you i need you to put a seed in the ground on that word okay i could teach about the seed all day i ain't going there because i just said i'm about to get off here listen i want you to have a good day listen listen on purpose you in boot camp listen you can't go to war without training you won't know how to fight in war if you're not trained properly what you're going through is training. Oh, God. What you're go going through is your training, is your training. Listen, I love you. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Make sure you're having a good day on Purpose Watches and represent him well today. Represent him well. I love you.